This, my friend, is the best capture card in the market. Now, the best one. Nobody does it better. I, I hate to say it, but that's, that's what it is. So, I tested it for you, and I have a lot, lot of things to say about it. Let's get into it. So, as always, we're going to start with a little bit of context. As you know, I've been using capture card for a long, long time. Like, uh, almost like six or seven years now. And the one I was using before is this beast here. The Live Gamer 4K Avermedia by Avermedia. So you can see it's a PCI Express one versus the USB one I just showed you before. So what was really the whole problem with the old generation card? Because when you think about it, this baby is still able to capture 4K 60, right? So on paper, like this is a great capture card. The issue is that if you are playing video game on any uh, new type of monitor with a higher refresh rate, you're going to be limited by this baby here. So for 4K, it's 60 Hertz. For uh, 1440p, if I remember correctly, it was 144 Hertz. And for 1080p, it was 240 Hertz. When this card was released, this was the best on the market. And I, I never had any issue uh, while I was using them on Windows, except I had to use them on Windows, but that's, that's another topic. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? With my monitor I'm using right now, uh, which are 1440p, 240 Hertz monitor, I can overclock them on 270 Hertz, but basically they are at 240 Hertz. I can't use this capture card. So my only way out uh, was to uh, duplicate the screen and have like some time, if I was on Windows, this wheel like flickering each time I will start my game. And like th the user experience was, was not the best to say the least. And on Linux, if you are running like uh, multiple screen, you will run to other type of problem. I, I don't want to discuss here, but I would say running uh, different refresh rate in linux right now with x11 is not the best idea i've done it i was pretty successful with it but it's not the most smooth i would say smooth experience so this is the, the problem really is that this card solve because you can play now at 14 14 p and 240 hertz while uh passing through this card. It's it, it just awesome, guys. Like, I have to say, it has been a long, long time. I've not been that excited for a product. If you are owning a 4K uh, screen and you want to capture it, the limit is 444 Hertz. And for 1080p, it's 360 Hertz, which is pretty awesome. Cherish on the cake. You can also have VRR and HDR passing through <laughs> this little piece of a beast and and not even feeling like nothing like so this this is awesome uh the only drawback right now is for the wide you know ultra wide type of monitor which are not uh, ready to be captured at a higher like refresh rate for now but they say they're gonna update that in a, in a future update and you will see this is gonna be a redundant message in this video unfortunately but that's why I wanted to actually make a video on this one. So to give you an example, when I received the card, it was not possible at the time to pass through 1440p 240 Hertz. But a firmware update was released by Avermedia and I was able to update it and finally have access to this uh, feature. When it comes to recording, you have to understand the data is going to go through the USB port. And this is uh, a place where you're gonna reach a little bit of contention, I would say. If you run uh, one of the latest uh, type of like motherboard with a 3.2 Gen 2 uh, type C uh, type of uh, USB port, you're gonna be golden. It's gonna be working right off the box and you're gonna have access to all uh, the different features. So now let's talk about recording. I don't know if you are aware about the situation about USB naming, but it's kind of a mess. And to be honest, like I have no idea before I bought this card. So long story short, when it comes to USB free, you really have like three type of speed. 
you have the 5 gigabit per second, the 10 gigabit per second, and the 20 gigabit per second. The good news is that for this one, you just need 10 gigabit per second. The bad news is that there is multiple description, or I would say name, for the same type of speed. And depending on the speed you're going to get out of your USB port on your motherboard, you're going to have different uh, recording possibility, I would say. So I'm going to put them on your screen there for you to have an idea how it is. At this point, you're going to tell me like, but Air Max, like, why did you go uh, with the USB uh, C1, knowing that in the future, they're going to release a PCI Express one? So the first point that pushed me towards the, the USB version is the fact that the PCI Express version is going to have exactly the same feature. It's going to be exactly the same card, except it's going to take one more slot in my PC. And I've been using uh, another Avermedia card here, the, the 4K for uh, my actual DSLR there. And I've been super happy about it. It's, it's a win-win situation for me because I can free uh, a PCI Express slot on my motherboard and I just have to plug this baby there and I have exactly the same result. So the second point I wanna, I wanna talk about is flexibility. So with this BB here, if I wanted to record something on my laptop, for example, I, it wouldn't work. But with this one here, I have no issue. I just have to plug it on my laptop, start it, and boom, I'm good to go. I have a capture card now on my laptop. So it gives me more flexibility overall for capturing any type of content. And, and this is pretty awesome. And the last one, but not the least, is the fact that those cards which come with a USB interface, most of the time, they will be compatible with Linux because they have their driver living inside them, which is just awesome, guys. You just plug them into a Linux machine and it just works, nothing to do. And man, this is the life. Now everything is not perfect. And that's really the reason why I wanted to make this video. I had issue with the card, but I don't believe it's related to USB in general or the type of operating system I was using. It was related to the fact that this is a brand new product. And I have the feeling that Avermedia didn't really put a lot of work in the firmware. So let me explain. So when I got the product, and just to be super clear about this product, I'm not sponsored or anything. Uh, by the way, Avermedia, if you want to send some of your product, I, I will take them and review them with pleasure. But when I got uh, this capture card, not all the functions were actually available. And they released less than two weeks ago a firmware. And this firmware kind of like unlocks some of the new function. And what I believe is this firmware needs a little bit of work. So let me explain. When I used this card on Windows with the proper USB port, I had no issue. Like everything, all the functions were there. I was pretty happy, uh, pretty happy about it. No driver needed. You just plug it and it's work. Now, if I use the same card on a different port, which was not... 3.2 Gen 2, but will be, for example, 3.1 uh, Gen 1, which is literally the same at 3.2 Gen 2. It's just a different type of like name, but it's it's the same speed. It's 10 gigabyte per second. The card just will not work at the same speed. It will be recognized at 5 gigabyte. And this was an issue. On paper, the port I used, even if it's a different name, is still 10 gigabyte per second but the firmware did not recognize it as is. And that was the main issue I encountered. So if you want to buy this and you need to use it right away before any type of like future update, you need to make sure that you have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and not another like USB port, which is 10 gigabyte, but doesn't have the same name. Like it will just not work. I want to be, you know, like clear with you. Don't make this mistake. Even if you are running on Windows, like especially if you are running at Windows, it won't work. Now let's talk about Linux. So Linux, it's, it's another type of problem. The card on Linux, if you plug it, is going to work right off the bat. 
You're gonna open OBS, everything will be fine. I made recording with it. It was nice. However, for whatever reason on Linux, I tried on three different machines, which all of them have 10 gigabyte USB port. And I tried on three of those with different distribution and it is just not recognized at 10 gigabyte no matter what. Again, I believe it's a firmware issue. I hope they're gonna fix it. But on Linux, this is the state. And my guess is like, if it's this state on Linux, it's gonna be exactly the same on Mac. That's the first one. The second one is like, when you plug the card on Linux and you launch OBS, everything's gonna be clean and working. You're gonna be limited at five gigabit per second, but everything's gonna be there. However, when you close OBS, it's gonna crash. You won't be able to get the capture image again. Even if you will see that the card is totally well detected within Linux. And I don't know right now if it's an OBS issue or a firmware issue, but I would like to believe that it's, it's definitely a firmware issue because on my over capture card, which is also USB, I don't have any problem with Linux on OBS. So what is my verdict about the card? I still believe this is the best card on the market. And I've not been fan of Avermedia because of their overall policy toward uh, Linux in general. They really like kind of like pushed away the Linux user, which is which is a shame in my opinion. Uh, I really hope like they're gonna they're gonna change their attitude towards that when we get like more like market share and they realize there is a, a real like business opportunity with with a Linux user overall. But I would say like right now, this card is the, the best capture card on the market. And I really hope the next uh, firmware update provided by Avermedia are going to solve the little issue I went through. But man, like if you are running Linux and you want to do like, you know, high end type of gaming and keep your smooth refresh rate on your main machine, this is it. As soon as they fix the firmware, I'm going to make a follow-up video. I'm going to build myself the Linux dream headless stream server, man. The, 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 the dream. And I want to make a video about it. It's going to be one of my projects. So don't forget to subscribe, you know, give a like to this video. Uh, and also like activate the little notification bell down there to make sure like you're going to see a video about that. But I'm telling you, man. Imagine having a headless server with one of these baby recording everything you push toward it on Linux, having a little Intel Arc 380 encoding everything like, dude, I'm, I'm just losing my mind just talking about it. And on top of that, having a stream deck which controls the whole headless server. That's my project. That's what I want to do. And I already look into it. It's totally feasible. The only issue is the firmware of this one. So Avermedia, like, please hurry up. I'm impatient. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, see you in the next one. I want to again thank you all the members of my community to watch uh, those videos. Don't forget to put a thumb up. And I also want to thank you uh, very much all uh, the Patreon and the YouTube members that helped me financially to run this. Guys, you are the best. See you in the next video. Bisous, bisous.